So I thought today I would go through a solution uh, that I came up with uh, for this challenge, uh, which is, is the king in check? Um, and I thought the solution was pretty cool. Um, having just done uh, this one, which is a tic-tac-toe win checker that had the constraint of um, doing it via a regex, um, with that fresh in my mind, I imposed the same constraint on myself on this uh, challenge as well. So you get an 8x8 chessboard and you have to find out if the king is in check. Um, the board is oriented from black's perspective and uh, it's the black king and here are all the white pieces. Um, so yeah, you get an 8x8 grid and you have to determine if the king is in check. Here's my solution. Um, I was pleased to be able to achieve it. And I was also pleased at how simple it ended up being. Um, comparing with many of the other solutions, there's quite a lot of code to achieve uh, the task. So, oh. Yeah, I was really quite chuffed at how it turned out in the end. Um, yeah, mine sort of stands out as being pretty concise. Whether that's a good thing is up for debate, but nonetheless, I was kind of pleased to achieve that. So let's start with a pawn then. So with a pawn, a pawn can only be in two possible locations. So if you've got a king here, it would only be in check if there is a pawn here or a pawn here. So to match that then, if we took this pawn as an example, delete that one, um, you would have to have a pawn followed by a space, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces, and then the king. So if you wrote that as a regular expression, it would be a pawn followed by eight dots to match any character, because it, it doesn't matter what those spaces are, and then a king. If it matches that regular expression, then there is a pawn um, forwards and left. Similarly, if you wanted to match a pawn on the right, you would do six dots because you would have a pawn, one, two, three, four, five, six spaces, and then a king. So either of those, uh, those are the only two combinations for matching um, a pawn putting the king in check. So this is a good start. There is a problem though with a rather literal edge case. So when we're, when the king is at the edge of the board, it's going to be uh, applying that regular expression. Let's take this one for example, um, and attempting to match for a pawn that is off the edge of the board. Um, because it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, because this is a concatenated string, it doesn't know that there are any edges to the, the board. Um, so it's going to try to match the, the character that is here, which is not correct. So we need a solution now to overcome that problem. And after thinking about it for a while, I imagined, well, what if you had um, artificial padding? So, for example, looking at this, now, so if our string was, was a concatenation of all of these, and instead of using eight spaces, we used, uh, well, these are each eight, so it would be 24 spaces or 24 um, characters. Um, so a pawn and then 24 characters and then match the king, then that rule is still going to work and it's going to solve the problem of this um, edge case where you won't actually have a pawn here. It will actually match this, well, it won't match the hash that is in this character position. And when I thought about this even, f even further, you don't even need this left-hand edge of the board. Um, it's sufficient to have um, the, the, the padding only on the right-hand side. 
because when this gets concatenated, it's going to wrap round to hashes anyway. So it's kind of like that these count on both sides of the board. Um, so yeah, I thought that was quite a neat solution. We've currently got two regular expressions to match each of the possibilities for the pawns that could give the king check. But I had an idea when writing this that we could make it more concise by having a flipped version of the board. So if you imagine that we only had this version of the regular expression that matches this pawn and this king because we've got eight characters in between. So if we look at the situation where we had a pawn here, let's say, now this of course wouldn't match because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six um, characters between the pawn and the king. But if we've got this flipped as well, we can paste that there and paste that there. You can see that this then would actually match the regular expression um, for eight characters. Now, of course, I'm saying eight just to illustrate the point, but with all of this on a single line, it would end up 32. Um, so yeah, you'd, you'd be matching 32 dots. Um, yeah, a pawn followed by 32 dots or 32 characters and then the king. Um, so you can see here that by having both uh, a flipped board and the original board in the string, this covers both cases and shortens our the need for the regular expressions to be in, in half. So we don't actually need this one if we have a flipped version of the board. Now, of course, there's a simpler way to write this. If we know it's going to be exactly eight uh, characters, we can use the repetition um, feature of regular expressions. So you can write the same thing like this. And we can update this to reflect what we have uh, with our now flipped board. Um, so we would have 32 characters. Now I should note that I had eight between each of these boards for illustrative purposes, but it actually works with seven. Um, just because if you were to go diagonally, you miss the corner anyway, uh, with seven. So this then becomes 30 rather than 32. And if we flip back to my solution, this is where this 30 comes from. So we have a pawn followed by 30 of any character and then a king. And that will match pawns giving the king check. On with bishops. So in the situation that we've got here, uh, now clearly this is very similar to the pawn example we had a moment ago and you can use pretty much the exact same regular expression now the only difference is if we move the bishop um, now in this situation we've got a space and then the king so this isn't quite right because before we get to the king we need a space and then we need yet another 30 characters and then the king. And this would now match in this situation because we've got a bishop, the number of characters we need to get to there, and then a space, then the same number of characters, and then the king. But what we want to allow is for the bishop to be on any square along that diagonal. And in order to achieve this, we can make this part of the regular expression optional put it in brackets and then repeat it as many times as needed. And this is how we can match. In fact, the exact example that I used is this. This is what I did in my solution. And of course here I'm matching either a bishop or a queen because it's 
equally valid for the queen to be giving check along this diagonal as well. Now, the only thing left to do is to honor this other diagonal. Now, this is something that is now different from pawns in that we have to go both in this direction and in this direction. We don't need to consider going right because of the fact that we have a flipped version of the board. So there we go. Pretty much the exact same thing, except we match the king first and then we match uh, the required number of characters um, and then the, the relevant piece. And that explains where this part of the regular expression comes from. Matching horizontally for a rook or a queen is pretty simple. Um, you either match a rook or the queen followed by any number of spaces and then the king, of course. And the flipped version is handled by this as well. To match vertically is essentially the exact same concept as matching along a diagonal. It's just that instead of being offset by one each time, uh, we don't have that offset. So for that reason, the amount of characters that we have to match is 29 instead of 30. And of course, we have to match in the opposite direction as well, just as we did with diagonals. And for matching knights, it's pretty much a case of just matching the knight followed by a specific number of characters to hit the king. So we have this position at 60 characters, this position at 31, which is, of course, one more than the case for a pawn. Um, and then the inversion of that in the opposite direction, where we've got a king followed by um, the correct number of characters um, on the other side. And the final result looks something like this. So we've got the test for the pawn, the diagonals, the orthogonal, uh, horizontal and vertical, and knight positions. So we execute the regular expression for each with our test board, and we find matches. Now, of course, the test board consists of the original chess board, which is an array of arrays. We map each row to a new array, which consists of the original row, plus some padding that we've defined here, which is our seven characters of padding, um, and the row in reverse order. And once we have that, we then join uh, each of those rows together with some more padding. So to add the final padding to the right hand side between each of the rows. And this works. So if we test it, it works. Now, of course, this isn't the one liner that I did before, but yeah, it's just a matter of concatenating all of the regular expressions together with an or um, operator and you get to the final solution. So there you go, with a bit of refactoring, you can get that down to a single regular expression um, and get it on one line for additional style and unreadability points. Um, if you have any challenges you'd like me to tackle with a similar constraint of doing it only with regular expressions, let me know in the comments below and I'll have a go. So I hope you found this entertaining, uh, as entertaining as I did, hopefully. So catch you later.